What's good, YouTube? And welcome back to the channel. Today, you're watching the Goon Squad as I excitedly cover Charizard V Star, my favorite Charizard at the moment. Who doesn't like a good Charizard deck? Because I sure as hell do. Charizard is an absolute blast to play, and if you like Charizard, this is the deck for you. Uh, and it's not too bad price wise at the moment. But with that said, let's jump right in. There are four Charizard V in the deck. There are three copies of the Darkness Blaze one here and one copy of the Brilliant Stars. Now I know what you're thinking. You're playing the wrong Charizard. I know. It doesn't matter in this list. Three Darkness Blaze are what I got my hands on. And that's what we're rolling with. We'll swap them out for Brilliant Stars over time. But we're not attacking with Charizard. One attacks 90 for three and discards all tool cards. The other one does a flat 80 for three. If we're attacking for three, we are going to immediately jump into our Charizard V-Star. Charizard V-Star for three, 130, and if it has any damage counters on it, it's doing an extra 100, so that's 230 for three. So don't even worry about that V. It has the once per game V-Star Power Star Blaze for four energy. Discard two energy, and it's doing 320 damage. Those pesky V-Maxes are not safe, as we have ways to ramp up anything that might survive the turn. And we're playing two copies of the new Moltres with Inferno Wings, it does 20, and if it has any damage counters on it, it does 70 more damage. Uh, one prize Pokemon, 90 damage for one energy, that's pretty good. It'll help fix our numbers, the Charizard might not be able to hit on its own, and it's a much better attack than anything on the Charizard V. If you're playing Charizard V to attack, you've already lost. Next up, we have Talonflame. So this card appealed to me, it's from Vivid Voltage, you know, forgotten bulk card. First attack, fast flight for a colorless energy. If you go first, yep, yeah, if you go first you can use this attack. Discard your hand, draw six cards. Feeds into the whole discard element of the Charizard deck, terrific. Has an attack for three energy, does 160, discard an energy from it. It's weak to lightning and it's free retreat. It also has the fast flight attack, those are the three appeals to it. So if you're playing something with water, you might be able to use Talonflame here. You might not. Uh, we have some ways to bump up its health a little bit to kind of keep it out of Suicune range. But if they're playing Ludicolo or they're playing Inteleon, it's not really going to matter. But Talonflame is here as an alternate type weakness Pokemon. So, yeah, anyway, I, I got off tangent there. So, let's go back to our support Pokemon. So, we're playing two copies of Bidoof. Propaganda's here. Didn't escape this deck either. I am playing the Industrious Incisors Barrel. Surprise, surprise. Once per turn, you can draw until you have five cards in hand. This this card is just too good not to include. I'm sorry. It's, it's in the deck. I'm having fun with it. Sue me. Don't actually sue me. But anyway. We're playing one copy of Crobat for some explosive draw. And then, because Jolteon and Rapstrike Gershifu are still a thing, we're playing Manaphy for the bench protection. Now on to the support. So playing four copies of the newly reprinted Ultra Ball, discard two cards, search for any Pokemon, feeds into the discard element of the deck. Terrific, grab anything, grab the V-Stars, grab the barrels. We're playing this over Evolution Incense because I'm not getting caught with Evolution Incense in my hand. Always how it shakes out, dead card. I'd rather be searching for more basics with Ultra Ball. And of course, we're playing for Quick Ball. Having eight outs to the Pokemon you want turn one, better than having four outs. So that's the reason why I'm playing it. Thins out your hand for a barrel if you need to dig without playing a supporter. And of course, because we are hitting very specific numbers, we are playing four copies of Boss's Orders. We want to play Boss almost every turn. So the barrel is our draw for those turns we take off from draw support. Uh, boss lets us pick up what we're gonna take up. So, we're going to take out those non-evolved V Pokemon. We're going to take out those evolving Pokemon. We are going to occasionally Starblaze a V Max Pokemon. Boss is our guy. Boss is our go-to supporter. If things are going a little rough for, you know, your turn behind, we have four copies of Research. Discard your hand, draw seven. Again, we are just dumping cards and going. You play what you can. You maybe hold it if you, if you want to keep it for another turn. But generally, everything that you want will be in your hand and playable. So, we do not mind throwing cards away in this deck. And then we are playing two copies of Raihan. Charizard is not invincible. So, when Raihan, when Charizard gets knocked out, 
Raihan attaches an energy to your next Charizard. You can grab another energy from your deck. You can grab any other card you want from your deck. Anything. So you can go Raihan, attach, Magma Base and search the card from your deck. Attach an energy from hand. And we are explosive firing again. So we have another Charizard lined up. Or if they knock out a Moltres. Or if they knock something out, we can go attach to a Charizard, promote something in the active. Mew takes his cheeky KO like it does. Attach, Raihan, Magma Basin, and then the attachment from previous turn. Starblaze is very easy to power up. Two copies of Raihan because I hate prizing things. And next up, we have the Stadium that makes it work. Four copies of Magma Basin. So once during your turn, you can attach Fire Energy from your discard pile to one of your benched Fire Pokemon. So we're discarding a lot of cards in this deck. Quick Balls, Fast fast Flight, Ultra Balls, Research. There'll be plenty of Fire Energy in the discard pile to really utilize this card. Great card. Absolutely brings Fire back from the dead. And now on to our Damage Modifiers. We have two copies of Choice Belt to bring Explosive Flame up to 260, to bring Inferno Wings up to 120. And if you're in real trouble, to bring Bright Flames up to 190. Not sure what math is going to fix, fix directly, but it is an option. Uh, choice Belt just kind of makes sure that we hit the numbers we need to hit when we want to hit them. Then we're going to play another damage modifier, but this one's for us. Big Charm. We're going to bring that Charizard up to an effective 310 hit points. Kind of try to negate the Magma Basin. They play Tool Scrapper, it feels bad, but we're not seeing a lot of Tool Scrapper these days. So we're going to roll with two copies of that to try to make our Charizards a little bulky. Try to bring the barrels at a rapid flow range, you know. Uh, very rarely we throw it on the Crobat. It helps the Talonflame. Brings Talonflame up to 220. Watch your benching. Suicune might be able to take a hit on the Suicune. Eh, you know, options. We're just brainstorming. 30 health does come around every once in a while. Air Balloon. Now this is where everybody's going to go on about the Charizard's Vs. So Air Balloon would make every card in the deck a free retreater if the Charizard Vs were all from Brilliant Stars. You know what? I'll get around to it. We'll swap them out. We'll go Brilliant Stars when I can find them. But yes, Air Balloon gives everything in the deck, a fr makes it a free pivot. They're good to have early. They're good to make sure you're never stuck and you can really abuse the Magma Basin. Got it? Good? Awesome. We're gonna play one copy of Escape Rope. Sometimes it's a fifth boss, sometimes it's an extra switch card. It has its uses. I'm watching a lot of Mew play it. I've been having fun with it. Catches your opponents off guard if they're not expecting it. They bench one thing and bench another. A lot of boards are not as worried about spreading, uh, spreading their board wide first turn as we are. So we could catch their one Pokemon hiding and poke it with Moltres turn one, or we can get them later in the game. Yeah, or we can get that Talon Flame in the active if we didn't start it. But great card to have. And one copy of Switch because overkill. I am always making sure I can get Talon Flame into the active or making sure I can get a Moltres into the active after I've charged it up. We're not playing any, we're not playing around. We're going to make sure we have our switching outs and we are going to make sure that we can do damage when we need to do damage. All right, and lastly, on to the energy. So we are going the bulk route. Four Heat Fire Energy. So it gives 20 extra health to your fire Pokemon. So with a big charm and a heat fire energy, we're bringing Charizard up to a 330 hit point, two prize Pokemon. Magma Basin brings us down to 310. That's fine. It's not meant to fix all the numbers, but it's just to give us a little bit of sustainability. The heat fire energy on a Moltres is kind of funny. Make them work through 140 hit points. Talon Flame, 210. You can start stacking them. Hypothetically, you can get up to eight at you know, 80 extra health on your one of your Pokemon. It's happened once or twice. It's kind of funny if your opponent doesn't see it coming, but again, it's mostly to try to negate the damage from the Magma Basin. It does come in handy. Again, you're making their numbers a little more awkward. They might have to burn an extra power tablet. They might have to attach a choice belt to something they don't want to, just to make sure they hit the numbers on you. Anything where you can skew their numbers and make their math a little more awkward is always a good thing. And again, it's an attachment as well, so it helps fill uh, attack costs in this deck. And lastly, we are playing nine fire energy. I wanted to make sure I always started at least one, and I always wanted to make sure I had extras to discard for Magma Basin. So I always try to keep one in hand and send one off to the bin. And I wanted to see them regularly enough that I'm not playing energy search to go get them. 
But this is the deck that I've been having an absolute blast with. Good guy Mitch played a few games with me the last little while. Charizard functions a lot better than you'd expect. Um, if you don't expect to see any spread decks, Manaphy could very well become a Lumineon or a Leon or anything else you're thinking if you really want to go the commitment route of, uh, you know, more damage mods. Could even be an Eldegoss because you don't mind pitching bosses early or an Ordinary Rod. Manaphy is the flexible slot in this deck. If you don't expect to see spread, by all means, cut it. I see a lot of Rapid Strike Urshifu. I see a lot of Jolteon. I keep it, just for the time being. When Jolteon goes down in play, bring it back. But with that said, let me know what you think of the list. If the Brilliant Stars Charizard really bothered you that much, let me know as well. But again, feel free to like, leave me a comment, like the video. If you're interested in this kind of thing, let me know, and I will happily bring you some more. And until next time, take care.